I had to take my time with this video because that was without a doubt the biggest upset of the college football season, period. So, let's do a review. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockShock01. And yesterday, the 5-2 Kansas Jayhawks were back home at David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium for its homecoming game as they took on the undefeated 6th-ranked Oklahoma Sooners and pulled out the upset, winning the game by the final score of 38-33. Now, I do have a story with this. I was with four other people, and we all left midway through the second quarter because of the weather. It sucked that that was happening, but, you know, at the time, it felt right. So we went to go eat. We still had the game on. We were still in Lawrence watching the game, and we decided to go back. <laughs> We decided to go back with like five minutes left and without a doubt that was probably the greatest game that I technically got to witness. The last five minutes were probably the most crazy five minutes I've ever seen since the 2022 Liberty Bowl against Arkansas. But what a win for Kansas. This is without a doubt a defining win because this might be the last time that Kansas plays Oklahoma period, as they will go to the SEC next year to face off against Florida, Georgia, Alabama, LSU. They're going to have a tough time having that Kansas loss stuck in their mouth and down their throat. Oh, don't worry. Texas has the same thing, too, because they've lost to them twice and once in Austin. But there's a lot of historical things that happen with this one. Um, with the win. Kansas is bowl eligible for the second consecutive season, which is the first time that that has happened since the 2007 season and the 2008 season. Then secondly, it's the first time that Kansas has beaten Oklahoma since 1997. So KU was on an 18 game losing streak to the Sooners and that was snapped. Third, it's the first time that Kansas beat an AP top 10 team since 2008. And that would be during the FedEx Orange Bowl against Virginia Tech because they were ranked third. So that counts. Finally, the biggest one, in my opinion, is the first time that Kansas has beaten an AP Top 10 team at home in Lawrence for the first time since 1984. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was also Oklahoma that Kansas beat in that situation. Now, there was a lot of good things that happened in this game, especially because we won, but there were a few things that really need to be fixed. So with that being said, for those of you who do not know, I give positives and negatives about the game. Give a player the game and a player who needs to improve. Without further ado, let's do it. Positives for once, KU actually outgained Oklahoma and it was by a slim margin, but it still counts. In the game, KU had 443 total yards, which kind of surprises me that that happened. And KU gave up 440 to Oklahoma. So we beat them by three. And most of it happened on the final drive, but still. For KU stat-wise, the 443 total yards includes 218 passing yards and 225 rushing yards with an average of 6.1 yards per play. While Oklahoma's 440 is actually made up of 171 passing yards, yes, that means KU out through Oklahoma, and the run game, Oklahoma had 269 rushing yards. So K Oklahoma outgained KU, but only averaging 5.9 yards per play. So KU did better there by 0.2 that's crazy. Picking up first downs. Surprisingly, KU did well as they picked up 25 first downs and defensively making sure Oklahoma doesn't pick up a lot of first downs. Huge in this game as Oklahoma was held to only 19 in the game, which is way under their average picking up first downs. 
even though Oklahoma has more like big plays in their arsenal, they were not picking up first downs at all in this game. And both teams were kind of struggling to pick up first downs, like on specific downs, and we'll get to that. Fourth down efficiency. A lot of people are going to be kind of complaining to Brent Venables about this one on why he didn't call timeout because it ended up costing him in the long run as KU actually had better efficiency on fourth down than Oklahoma did as Kansas was 2-3, around 67% on fourth down efficiency while OU was 1-2, of two, 50% efficiency the big conversation of fourth down conversions will have to go in the fourth quarter on kansas's pickups because both times in the fourth quarter with basically the game on the line kansas picked them up and got big plays especially the last one with uh jason bean connecting with lawrence arnold for 39 yards i think it's either 39 or 36 but that set up the game winning touchdown with 55 seconds left the fact that Kansas could actually convert on fourth down, which really didn't happen against Oklahoma State because they were goose egg. But yeah, it's good to see that KU knew what to do in that situation to find the open guy, to pick up the first down, get enough yards to keep the drive moving. My next positive and probably the biggest one in my opinion would be penalties. Because oh boy, there was a lot of them called in this game. And most of them came for the opposing team. Yes, Kansas won the penalty battle as they were only called for five penalties and 55 yards. Oklahoma was called for 11 penalties in this game that cost them 101 yards. That's nuts. I mean, some of them were kind of correct. Some of them were a little ticky tack. Some of them they completely missed, but Oklahoma really shot themselves in the foot because on one drive alone, they had not one, not two, but three personal foul penalties. And it was all on the same drive. That's so nuts. So how that thing went down was two of them happened on the same play. There was a personal foul, unnecessary roughness call. That's 15 yards. Second, the Oklahoma bench wouldn't stop chirping about it. Ref threw a flag, personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, and that's another 15 yards. And then later in the drive, this was kind of like third and goal. Jason Bean, in retrospect, slipped, but a lot of people will say he slid. Uh, was short of the line of gain, but a personal foul targeting call ended up getting hit on Oklahoma, which was indeed confirmed and ended up disqualifying the player and then it set it up first and goal on the half yard line. So yeah, that was big to get those three personal foul calls because it really did, the last one really didn't change it because I'm pretty sure Kansas would have gone for it on fourth and goal from the one. But in retrospect, that ended up giving KU an easy six points to get the lead back. And the final positive I got is a push because it could be both a positive or a negative. If you want to take it that way, I'm more taking it on the latter side of the things. Turnovers. Both teams ended up with three. So no one won the turnover battle, which was probably a good thing because turnovers was a big difference in this game as well. But both teams ended up with three. Kansas' side had one fumble lost and two interceptions. And the fumble came on a kickoff return. And the interceptions actually came later in the fourth. Whereas Oklahoma, it's the reverse of this. Oklahoma had two fumbles lost. One of them was just a legit fumble on a rushing t attempt, I believe. And then another was on a kickoff uh, malfunction situation. And then an interception that was thrown ended up actually costing Oklahoma points as it ended up leading to a pick six. So, yeah. Even though there's really not much to say because the weather was definitely a part of this to force a lot of turnovers, I consider it a push. So, yeah, KU having a push with Oklahoma in the turnover battles, I consider it a positive. And with all that said, those are my positives. Only one negative that I got from this game, and that would be third down efficiency. Now, defensively, KU did well forcing 
bad third downs for Oklahoma as they were only two of 10. But this is more of the offensive side of things as negative wise, KU was terrible on third down conversions. We could not convert on third down until late. Kansas was four of 14 on third down, which is less than 18%. And some of those situations were like third and mediums. And there was a couple third and longs here and there, but mostly that they were like third and medium, about third and seven, third and six, in my opinion. And we just could not convert them to save our lives. Even when we were in the red zone, it would end up costing us and we ended up taking three, which it kind of helped us in the long run. But still, with the rest of the conference slate that you have, that's bad and you gotta fix that. Because if you don't pick up thirds downs in this league, you're gonna lose. Simple to the point. And it's happened before with this team. Texas as a good example. So really need to fix that. And yeah, not having a great third down efficiency really is a negative. And with that said, those are my negatives. Player of the game. Now, this is kind of tough because a few guys really deserve the honor and I just don't know, have enough space for it. So I'm gonna give honorable mentions first. First one being Mason Fairchild. Three catches for 62 yards, averaging 20.7 yards per catch. Man. He had some big plays in this game that really set the tone for KU's offense and scoring. So, he was a beast. He played well, and I love to see him get more receptions. So, unfortunately, he didn't score in the game, which kind of cost him. So, that's why he deserves an honorable mention, in my opinion. And then you got Lawrence Arnold as my last honorable mention. Three catches for 79 yards, averaging 26.3 yards per catch. But unfortunately, he didn't score either. He had a good game today, and he had probably the biggest play of the game with the fourth and sixth catch that brought Kansas inside the red zone around the 10-yard line with less than a minute left. Big clutch play. He had some incredible catches in this game as well on a big third down play over the middle, full extension, making the catch really good. And then, yeah, going back to that fourth and sixth. Probably the biggest catch in his career, in my eyes. So, yeah, although he didn't score, I do have to give him props. So, Lawrence Arnold deserves an honorable mention. But, my players of the game, and yes, they're going to be co-players of the game. It's going to be the two-headed running back machine that was Devin Neal and Daniel Hyshaw. The running game for Kansas was huge in this one. Let's start with Daniel Hyshaw. 12 carries for 51 yards, 4.2 yards per carry, and two rushing touchdowns. A really, really good game for the Oklahoma native to put up on the Sooners. There was a couple times that he had some runs where it looked like he was going to get nothing and maybe lose a yard. But he ended up like fighting through it, and that power back mentality just kept him going, and he picked up five maybe six on some plays and there was one where he trucked a sooner and i couldn't believe that and he picked up like 12 on that play so it was a really good and solid performance from daniel highshaw and to pick up two scores which i think that's his first multi-touchdown game in a while so yeah good for him and he deserves a player of the game nod and finally we get over to devin neal who a lot of people are considering the hometown hero. 25 carries for 112 yards, 4.5 yards per carry, and the game-winning touchdown. Yes, his alone touchdown was the last one, which was clutch. He was slipping going into the end zone at that point, but he was able to extend himself, get the ball across the line, and the rest is history. He's inching closer to a top five spot on KU's all-time rushing list, my goodness, Devin Neal is a running back that KU fans should never forget. Because with this performance against the six-ranked Sooners going for over 100 yards, this is without a doubt his signature game, in my opinion. I would say Texas would be close, or Oklahoma State last year. But this one, pretty 
stinking close. So yeah, no question here that Devin deserves the nod as well. So my players of the game will be Daniel Hyshaw and Devin Neal. Player who needs to improve, I'm gonna go with Luke Grimm on this one. I was kind of surprised that he didn't get very many touches in this one. Two catches for 19, averaging nine and a half per catch. I don't know, maybe Oklahoma was like playing tight on Luke Grimm if that was the game plan, but it worked as he really got nothing. And there was a couple times where uh, he was open and then got absolutely manhandled, scrubbed by like a couple dudes and a flag was not thrown, but you can't complain about that now. Hopefully he gets more targets. Hopefully he can actually get more receptions in these next few games as Kansas has a little bit of a momentum swing on their side. So unfortunately for this one, Luke Grimm is my player who needs to improve. All right, I've got a few top plays for you and we begin with our first one in the first quarter as Kansas's first drive stalled out on a fourth down conversion miss. Oklahoma had basically three plays at this point and a critical third down and one. And they decided to go with a wide receiver screen However, cornerback Mello Dotson read it like a book, picked it off, and took it to the house for the first score of the game with this incredible pick six. The next play I've got, we head to the third quarter. Kansas was down by one. And after holding Oklahoma to a three and out, Kansas was driving and they got all the way to the 38 yard line of Oklahoma and a big first down run by lean mean Jason Bean as his 22 mile an hour speed took him all the way to the end zone to give KU its first lead since 14 to nothing in the second quarter. And finally, this one should be pretty obvious. After a big fourth and six conversion, Kansas was in the red zone with a minute to go. And finally, they put the hands of the Lawrence native, real deal Devin Neal, to give KU a big, big boost and to give the Hawks the lead with less than a minute to go, which ultimately became the game winning touchdown. Those three plays were game-defining moments for Kansas to pick up a big win over a top 10 opponent in Lawrence. So yeah, with all that said, those are my top plays. And with all that said, that's going to do it for my review of KU versus Oklahoma. Again, the final score, Kansas 38, Oklahoma 33. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and push that notification bell, and tell your friends about these videos. And I should see you again for the next football review, as the Hawks will travel up north to Ames, Iowa, to take on the strong and defensive Iowa State Cyclones in a primetime matchup on ESPN. Which should be a good one, because the Cyclones have surprised a lot of people. But it should be a good one. But until then, have a good day. Never ever bring exotic dancers to the field house. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.